and welcome to Thursday on the Political Ranter Show. Some few things I want to talk to you about today. Prime Minister's questions which aired yesterday. And Mean Green resigning from the cabinet. An update on Mean Radcliffe. One of the first things I want to address, one of the first things that got me really angry yesterday when watching Prime Minister's questions was when Dr Rosina Alien Khan, MP for Tooting, asked her question to the Prime Minister about when she was actually going to do something about the homelessness of children. 2,500 children will be homeless on Christmas Day in this one area that was being highlighted and it was asked when Theresa May was going to do something about it and do you know what she said? Theresa May replied to this saying that just because they are homeless doesn't mean they are sleeping on the street and this is absolutely disgraceful. Do you know what this is basically saying? This is basically saying, oh, just because they're not sleeping on the streets, they're not my problem. We don't need to rehouse them. This is absolutely disgraceful behaviour from such a heartless and callous government. People like Theresa May and most of the Tory benches know what it's like to be homeless on such a special day in the calendar? I don't think so. Do people like Theresa May know what it's like to go without? Do people like Theresa May know what it's like to not have a family on Christmas Day and to not wake up in safety and security on such a special day of the year. Yeah, that got me really riled up yesterday and I've calmed down a bit now, but seriously, that was really disgraceful. So moving on into the next part of Prime Minister's question, Jeremy Corbyn and Theresa May debated the NHS and Jeremy Corbyn was asking about is the NHS equipped for winter and basically Theresa May basically just dismissed all his questions. Theresa May did debate the NHS yesterday. The NHS was basically the main focus of Corbyn and Theresa May's exchanges in the dispatch box. I just want to read off some of Theresa May's claims about the NHS when it came to yesterday. She claims that 7 million more tests are being announced, 2 million more people are getting surgeries and survival rates of cancer is going up. However, the test figure is not completely true because the BBC reported that only 54% of women are getting their smear tests back on time and while we are on cervical cancer screening time waitings are going up for women waiting to have their smear test and this is all happening on the Tory watch so all these figures are complete garbage. Also I want to point out on Theresa May's claim that more people are getting operations the Observer reported at the start of the year that more cancer appointments and more cancer surgeries were being cancelled by the NHS because of a lack of beds crisis so this is something that is a complete lie as well. 2015 it was reported by the Telegraph that UK cancer survival rates are, are below European standards and are one of the lowest in Europe. I want to talk about their claim that they would find 5,000 more GPs when it came to the NHS by 2020. However, as we have seen being reported earlier this week, there is a, there is a job crisis in the NHS and we have lost an equivalent of 1,000 GPs and there are 100,000 posts available in the NHS because people are being driven out of the NHS when it comes to pay because the NHS is not paying enough because of the public sector pay gap in England which I was very happy that was scrapped in Scotland so this is the crisis in our NHS Chief of the NHS suggested that the NHS needed 4 billion a year just to stand still and just to break even but the Tories have pledged less than half of that amount in their budget which you will see if you see my budget video so this is absolutely ridiculous the NHS is not safe in Tory hands no matter what they tell you Tories say that they want to protect the NHS but I think the only way we can protect the NHS is getting rid of the Tories we've had over 30,000 people waiting in trolleys and we've had 12,000 patients waiting in ambulance because there was no room in A&E's based in one of the richest countries in the world we should have enough we do have enough resources to provide healthcare for all our citizens but it's not getting the funding it needs Moving on, I want to talk about Damien Green resigning from the Theresa May cabinet today. I think Theresa May really needs another trip to Ikea. The cabinet is dropping like flies. We've had Pretty Patel and now we've had him and we've had other ministers resigning. The reason why Damien Green resigned, he was sacked, but the reason why he resigned because he is under investigation for watching pornography at work because porn was found on his work computer under some investigation. Also he is being invested for some sexual harassment claims 
which are being made against him. This is another scandal in the Tory cabinet and if you ask me we are getting closer and closer to that beautiful vote of no confidence which I've so long called for. Once again we can play at home can't we? How many cabinet members are we going to lose tomorrow? How many cabinet members are we going to lose before Christmas? How many members are we going to lose before March? Before my birthday in March? It, it's kind of like a little game and <sighs> cabinet is not fit for purpose with scandals after scandals, members after members resigning we need a snap election now. I also want to point out that Damon Green was arrested in 2008 on similar accusations and similar charges which he obviously denounced and denied. As his investigations follow and as more news comes out of course I will obviously keep you updated on the situation. There has been more scandals than I can keep up with on this Tory government. It's actually quite hilarious. Also I want to give you an update on Nazmin Radcliffe who as we know was the British Iranian who was trapped and imprisoned in Iran because of a training journalists but there has been a breakthrough in her case and I'm pleased to say and confirm that she's eligible for early release and this has been called on by the Irani Jurakesi. This is absolutely welcome news and I'm glad that we are at the process of getting her back where she belongs with her family. There's absolutely no evidence that she was trained during this and there was no evidence that she was a threat to this country and I'm happy we are finally getting this situation sorted out. The situation came out because of a failure in the Iranian system. No family should should be separated at Christmas. No husband and wife, no children from their families should be separated and I'm happy that we are finally getting somewhere. It might be a little too late for this Christmas but hopefully by March and hopefully by the summer of next year she will be back in England and back with her family. But Boris Johnson did not act quickly enough because he just went to Iran in the last few months to call for her release and do a press and whatever that was. So I'm happy that some good actually came out of him going to Iran if she has been declared eligible for her release so she won't be spending the next four or five years in prison which is fantastic. Also I want to do a national call to end programs such as Benefit Street, Poverty Britain, all those um, programs because what they do is they demonise people on benefits and then this gives the Tories an excuse to go after and attack the most vulnerable in our society because they're scrounging off the system. So this is something that needs to happen, it's something I would obviously support, the political Anders show would support if there was a national call to end shows like this. Jeremy Corbyn has called for it, I think John McDonald has called for it before, I want to lend my support to this uh, campaign because if you think about it, this is is poverty porn. This is something that is not good for this country and this actually stigmatises people who actually need help and people who need help from the system because you know what I will admit it there are some people that don't play by the rules and there are some people that take advantage of the system but this is very few people and these are the people that need to be caught out and these are the people that need to be prosecuted but the people that are actually playing by the rules and actually need help are stigmatised because of these people. I want to talk about homelessness being a national crisis in the UK which is something that has been widely reported and homelessness since 2011 has risen by 134%. This is a national crisis but then at the same time the Chancellor scrapped stamp duty for people buying houses which are worth 300k. People buying houses worth 300k, people who can afford to buy a house for 300k do not need as much help as people who have nothing in this country, who people who don't even have a home of their own, people who are sleeping on the streets. So these Chancellors priorities are all wrong. The most vulnerable in our society need our help but the most vulnerable in our society will not find that help from this government. A government who's completely reformed the welfare system so it drove more and more of the most vulnerable into homelessness poverty, into starvation. Me and New Labour definitely have issues but the fact is that they introduce things like tax credits, they introduce things like that that help the working people and they introduce child funds, they lifted people out of poverty while the conservatives are just undoing all that work when they cut tax credits for people who have more than two children and this is absolutely ridiculous this is absolutely shameful this is something the government should really be ashamed of they may actually claim yesterday in prime minister's questions that homelessness is less than it was under the labor government i wonder what politics would be like if you weren't allowed to lie like if it was legally impossible or physically impossible for you to actually lie and not say the truth 
That would be hilarious. That would be one hell of a Prime Minister's question. My question to the Prime Minister is this. What are you going to do on the NHS? Well, we want to privatise more services and we want to have healthcare which is accessible for the few and not the many. That is what Prime Minister's questions would be like if you could not lie. Theresa May pledged £2 million to tackle homelessness. Where is it? Thank you for joining me on the Political Ranter Show today. It was more of a rant today. And I hope everyone has a good day. And I'll see you next time.